Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for December 3rd, 2023. The Sagittarius New Moon Workshop is next Sunday, December 10th at noon Pacific time. Setting intentions with the moon is one of the most powerful manifestation tools there is. At these workshops, what I do is I talk all about the astrology of the new moon. We bring in some current events and topics like that, what it means for you and what could be coming up in your life, as well as I do as many hot take natal chart readings as I can. So you can go to the link in the show notes or my website, astrologybyceleste.com to sign up now. The theme of this week is dangerous liaisons, and there are three big things I want you to think about as you navigate this week. The first is that Venus in Libra is finishing up her journey through her home sign where she can do things with ease. Libra is her air sign home. Taurus is her earth sign home. Venus likes to unite, bring balance and harmony, bring pleasure. Venus rules women, jewelry, resources like money. Venus is diplomatic. Venus and Libra is diplomatic and can do some good things in terms of problem solving by communicating clearly and effectively with a goal for win-win solutions. Well, today, Sunday, she is going to square Pluto the planet of intensity, power struggles, domination. Pluto unearths things in order to be dealt with. It's Pluto it purifies and heals, but through fire. It's a, a diff, Pluto transits are typically difficult or complex and may unmoor someone a bit as they're being experienced. And I think this is important because Venus, last Thursday, she was connected to the South Node. Um, and the South Node is a cosmic drain. One of the stories in the news is that Cynthia Nixon is part of a democratic socialist group that is doing a five-day fast for Palestine, and they are protesting at, at the White House. Cynthia Nixon was Miranda Hobbs in Sex and the City. She's an actress with who's won Tonys and Emmys and whatnot. She's actually tried to run for mayor of New York at one point. Anyway, they're doing a hunger strike. So Venus rules pleasure and things like nourishing yourself with food and the South Node sending it down the drain. And so all they're going to do is drink water and lemon for five days. And looking at her natal chart, you can really see this ability to do this in her chart. She has Mercury, Chiron, and Saturn all conjunct within a degree in the sign of Pisces. So Mercury conjuncts Saturn. She's got that mental fortitude to stick with something that's really hard for Pisces, compassion about refugees, about people experiencing suffering, Chiron and Pisces. Yeah, very interesting that she is part of this part of this part of this fast and all three of them Mercury Chiron and Saturn square her Jupiter in Gemini so she is doing this for uh, a cause that has a lot of meaning to her yeah and Mars her Mars is at 23 Aries and the North Node is on her Mars and the North Node is um, an amplifier. So she's willing to take action. Mars and Aries, someone who can take decisive action. She's also an Aries sun, and she's really using her power to make a big statement. And that Venus south node is opposite her Mars and Aries. So she is 
choosing to experience some suffering to stand up for all of the trying to promote a peace, a ceasefire in Gaza. So the purpose of the deprivation of Venus South Node is to try to bring peace by deprivation. And then Venus moves from that South Node to Venus Square Pluto. And that can be somewhat of a tough stuff. That can be dealing with dark and heavy situations with love can be a way that you work with this transit, loving someone despite the fact they're in a crisis and plutonic crisis could be, you know, Pluto and Capricorn. That could be someone who is like really suffering from, I feel like, like bulimia or um, what is that called? Anorexia, someone who has like a serious, I'm getting images of a serious like uh, food disorder or any kind of uh, drug problem or things like that. It also can be about obsessive love, like being so obsessed with someone um, and it being unhealthy. It could also be like domestic violence kind of energy. It can also be catching someone in an affair, yeah, it could be something that happens with this transit, like like really a lot of pain and heartbreak around love is possible. Also, power struggles in relationships about how you're going to spend your resources could be something that comes up where someone wants to keep them for the long term growth and health of the of, of their relationship, and someone else wants something kind of like right now, this shiny bauble is something that's coming to me. Regarding the war in Israel, there could be news this week about um, hostages who have passed away um, and things like that, yeah, could be coming up. So it will be interesting to see how this transit plays out. The next thing I want to make you aware of is that after Venus and Libra and Pluto and Capricorn, both at 28 degrees near the end of the sign, make their tense activating square, then Venus will move into the sign of Scorpio on Monday. So imagine an eagle soaring through the air. Um, so graceful and beautiful, and then boom, diving into the deep, murky waters of Scorpio, an intense and passionate sign. This is the sign of Venus's detriment. So going from at, ho at home, being able to express herself with ease, then going into detriment. And a planet in detriment can express itself in extreme ways. Yeah, this is where the this is where the dangerous liaisons comes in. And Venus square Pluto kind of has that same energy. So we'll see. I mean, the ceasefire may have ended when Venus met the south node. Um, and if it didn't, it may there may be some more violence around this day in, in Israel. We shall see in the Israel-Hamas war. But yeah, Venus and Scorpio is not good for trying to negotiate through problems because people, it's a fixed sign. People can hold on to what they desire, Venus, and want too hard and not be willing to let go of anything in terms of that negotiating strategy. So this could be some, some kind of tough energy for what's going on in, in Israel. Yeah. And this is still part of the first thing, I, although I said, well, there are four things you're going to be made aware of this week. It's special. The next thing I want to make you aware of, and this is really number two, Venus square Pluto and then moving into Scorpio was number one. Number two is that we have a last quarter moon at 12 degrees of Virgo tomorrow. Yeah. So Virgo is a mutable earth sign. And it's a great time to think about decluttering. The sun is at 12 Sagittarius. So there's tension. It's a square between like maybe wanting to go on an adventure, but moon and Virgo, you got to do your duty. Um, you've got to be of service. Like uh, the Sagittarius energy can want to release itself from commitments, whereas Virgo is committed to commitments. Yeah, that Virgo is a more of a sign of, of service. So the sun in Sagittarius, the tarot card correspondence is the nine of wands. And that's a card of resilience. So think about if your work, it's like the 
the the soldier who's coming home from battle limping with the thing around their head yeah it's about being resilient not giving up it's nines you're you're almost to the finish line yeah think about that the astrology correspondence to the card is the moon in sagittarius having can you have keep hope alive emotionally the Tarot card for the moon at 12 Virgo is the nine of pentacles. That is the independent woman card of the tarot deck. Uh, she is like savoring all of the, her hard work that she's done over time and reaping some of the rewards. So Venus and Virgo is the astrology correspondence to that. So can you have the resilience to keep going and not give up because you can see in the future that Venus and Virgo nine of pentacles energy is available the Sabian symbol is a powerful statesman overcomes a state of political hysteria. So it's like, you know, they're doing this hunger strike outside of the White House. And I'm sure people, as they get hungrier and hungrier, will get amped up more and more and more. Um, so this is, can be about President Biden taking charge, turning things around, having the political savvy to to um work through some of the some of the issues that are going on um or you know just like denying in your mind what's really happening he's been tanking you know going down and down in the polls but mm, we'll see if there's some kind of poll comeback for president biden this week there may be some financial news when venus which rules resources go into scorpio a sign that we associate with uh, big money big wealth it's like ours banking. Yeah, you can think about Scorpio. So there may be some disappointing financial news at the last quarter moon because Virgo is a sign of poverty. It's part of a moon phase family. This last quarter moon, the new moon where the sun and the moon were both at 14 degrees of Virgo was on September 6, 2021. So what was seeded in your life around that time? At the first quarter moon where the sun was in Gemini, the moon was in Virgo, both at 16 degrees, was on June 7th, 2022. Was there some kind of pivot point? Did the story have some kind of advancement? So look at where that Virgo moon, what house it's in your chart, is what it's talking to, and that can help you understand it more deeply. The full moon was this March 7th, a sun in Pisces, moon in Virgo, both at 16 degrees. And now we come December 4th to the sun in Sagittarius and moon in Virgo, the last quarter moon. Um, what lessons have you learned at the full moon? What was revealed? So you can look at the dates. Think about two weeks on either side. Was there a story? Let your mind run free a little bit and see what you come up with. If you have planets between 12 and 18 of the mutable signs, you might have a story. The last thing I want to make you aware of is that Neptune stations direct at 24 Pisces on Wednesday. Neptune is the planet of illusions, delusions, and confusion. I got confused about what numbers I was on. Yes, I did. I'm taping this on the day after Mercury squared Neptune. So pardon me if I make any mistakes. There is the air of confusion hanging over us. And five days before and five days after a planet stations, there can be its energy is most intense and there can be stories around it. Neptune rules escapism. So if you have any problems or issues around drugs and alcohol, shopping, any kind of thing you do for escaping, be aware that you may feel triggered. Um, and if you're worried about anyone who is who has a serious problem with substances or gambling or what have you, you might want to check in on them because this five days before and after this Neptune station could be especially difficult for them. Um, notice your dreams. Uh, they may be really intense or really like creative or wild or visual during this time. Be mindful that some like paranoia can be stimulated. So really try to check in with yourself and calm down if you're you let your mind if your mind starts really spiraling. 
Yeah. Issues from around June 30th may resurface. Like say you were working on a creative project back then and then you put it down. You may get some new like a uh, new creative ideas to move this forward. Now, Pope Francis was announced he had a lung infection and Neptune is stationing square his 25 degree Gemini rising. And this sure sounds like, you know, some problem with his lungs in terms of them filling up with fluid because he was going to go on a trip. Um, despite the fact he had lung inflammation. So we'll see. Uh, there may be some, we're, we're in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde and the Pope may be a big story about this Mercury retrograde. Yeah, with him being ill. Yeah, Neptune, when Neptune squares your ascendant, it's on your sun and Mars, things like that, Saturn, it can be about physical weakness that you're feeling. Now, for most of us, it just may be kind of hard to stay focused. This is not the best time to make big decisions because you may not have see the whole picture or not have clarity, can't see things clearly. Think about that. Be mindful of deception. There may be some big stories about deception coming to light around this time. On Sunday, the word of the day is manipulation. We start the day with the moon in Leo. I love a Leo moon. It's fiery. It's feisty. Hopefully you're having a good weekend. But then we have Venus and Libra square Pluto and Capricorn, both at 28 degrees. This can be power struggles. This can be someone trying to, oh, please, baby, please, I need, or doing something sneaky to, to get what they want. So yeah, in a relationship. And it could... You know, things could be obscured. So yeah, be mindful. There's this tense aspect. Try not to get into unnecessary power struggles with your boo. Now, Mars and Sagittarius, well, King Kong's Jupiter in Taurus. They're both at six degrees. That's why I think there's something about money. Jupiter and Taurus, a lot of people, if your chart is activated, will be, that's going to be the action. Mars and Sagittarius doing something sneaky, to, to, to just get what you want, not thinking about the consequences, but mm, could cause a big problem in your relationship. The moon will enter Virgo at 7.50 p.m. Pacific time. Ch Virgo moon, chop wood, carry water, declutter, get organized, all of these kinds of things. How can you be of service? So if moon in Leo, you've been thinking all about yourself, hopefully you can wait till the moon in Virgo before you do anything self-destructive or destructive to your relationship, because then you'll be thinking more about how you can serve and how, you know, you can be in relationship. And if you're single, just don't sabotage yourself by doing something financial that's not in your best interest. On Monday, the word of the day is obsession. Venus enters her sign of Scorpio, the sign of her detriment at 10.50 a.m. Pacific time. Venus and Scorpio can be that like magnetic, beautiful woman, oh la la, or, or man that people are just drawn and attracted to. I'm thinking of, uh, what was her name? Kathleen Turner in Body Heat. That's so Venus and Scorpio energy, passionate, obsessive, um, really mm, magnetic. Yeah, you can think about that. The last quarter moon in Virgo will be at 9.49 p.m. Pacific time at 12 degrees of Virgo. There may be some big story um, about financial matters on this day. Yeah, we'll see what happens. On Tuesday, the word of the day is commitment. Venus and Scorpio will try and Saturn and Pisces. They're both at one degree. So trines are easy flow of energy. So Venus is a benefic, Saturn's a malefic. So you can send your money down the drain, down the toilet if you want, is something that could easily happen with this, like being so obsessed with that Birkin bag or whatever that you, oh, oh, who cares about the consequences, Saturn? Yeah. Instead, use your resources for what you value. Really consider your values. Maybe take a look at your values. This can be great for being committed in relationships. Um, Saturn is the glue that holds people together and Venus in love, staying power. Not that can be what you do now. Venus in the sign of her detriment. This could be someone who's obsessed with, 
you know, Bobby or Sally in accounting and not letting a silly thing like Bobby or Sally being married from stopping them from trying to to get with them. So hopefully you won't use it like that because the sun is also semi-square Pluto. So like shining a little light on obsessive, obsessive energies and things like that. There's a lot of coveting energy on this, I feel like on this day. On Wednesday, the word of the day is sacrifices. So this is a day Neptune stations direct at 24 degrees of Pisces. There may be some news about the Pope. Um, yeah, or news about Neptune, like Neptune and Pisces things. Um, there's all this stuff about this dog virus that's really scary, that's killing some dogs. Also in China, there's some uh, things... Uh, emergency rooms are filling up again. So there's some concern that there's some kind of pneumonia or something that may be getting more news. But Neptune also is about compassion, especially in the sign of Pisces, and can be about making sacrifices for others. Venus is by quintile Neptune on this day. So that can be beautiful energy about doing something nice and beautiful for someone. The moon enters Libra at 8.34 a.m. Pacific time. So can you, with the moon in Libra, think about collaboration and connecting and all of that good stuff. Now, the moon is ruled by this Venus and Scorpio, so it's not as nice a moon in Libra as it was uh, the last time we had it. But what can you do to, to bring harmony into your life? If you have a partner considering what sacrifices you want to make for them or for your children or for your pets or your parents or things like that. On Thursday, the word of the day is prioritize. The sun in Sagittarius will try and Chiron in Aries, both at 15 degrees. Sun in Sagittarius, suns are authority figures and in Sagittarius has... has um, relations to belief systems. This may be news about the Pope's sun signs Chiron or Jimmy Carter, who may just live forever. Um, but it could be news about, about him as well. He's been in hospice since March and his wife, Rosalind passed away. So we'll, we'll see what news there is. Now, Mercury and Capricorn is trying Jupiter in Taurus, both at six degrees. This is the first of three of these trines. This is incredible manifesting energy. Mercury is about the facts and our thoughts and our ideas. Jupiter is the big picture, the vision, the, the meaning behind things. This can be combining the meaning and purpose with things, expansive thinking, good ideas that bring an earth signs like material success. I love this structured ideas, Mercury and Capricorn, thinking structured ideas, strategic ideas in order to Jupiter and Taurus expand your wealth. I love this. It's, today, it's December 7th, December 18th, and January 19th are the three times that this will be having happening, this transit. These, this is great energy. Now, be aware there's still that Neptunian haze. So really work to prioritize what you need to do um, to help you stay on track with it. On Friday, the word of the day is strategic. The moon enters Scorpio at 7.34 p.m. Pacific time. Scorpio is deep waters. This can be, you know, it's a fixed energy where you can hold your focus in order to be strategic and, and finish up what you're doing, accomplishing what you set out to for this day. The balsamic moon starts at 1 Scorpio at 11.16 p.m. Pacific time. It's time to release, 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 let go of things. Yeah. And get extra rest this weekend. On Saturday, the word of the day is realistic. Now, it's a Venus day, a goddess day where Venus and the moon meet, but they're both in signs they don't like to be in. The moon is in the sign of its fall. Venus is in the sign of its detriment. This is like someone sneaking out of the house to go have an affair with the neighbor across the street or something like that, I feel like. Mm, yeah. But, or like some coming to pleasures that are not in your best interest, like eating, you know, the whole 
box of donuts rather than just one or something like that, like overindulging to your detriment. Because Venus is also opposite Jupiter on this day at six degrees of each sign, Venus in Scorpio, opposite Jupiter in Taurus. So what this can be, be about setting goals too high and being disappointed acting in extreme ways to get what you want. So Venus and Scorpio acting in an extreme way, trying to get attention or get get the feedback you want to feel um, because you want the person to make you feel like, you know, a goddess or whatever and and it, acting extreme. And it's probably not going to get what you want by doing so. It can also be just being self-indulgent, lazy, demanding recognition. I get the... Um, from Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction, Dan, I will not be ignored kind of energy. So can you be a realistic, realistic about what you expect from others rather than, you know, kind of go to extremes with this energy? But they're the benefics. So, you know, nothing necessarily needs bad needs to happen. Maybe it's just a call for you to recognize within yourself desires or things you do in order to try to get the love you want that aren't aren't really um, in your best interest. So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at Celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories or let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. Take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 